Welcome to the first edition of No Filter Mets Talk. I'll be your host, Joey Mattarelliano. Um, what I really want to start talking about here is basically some critique on what the Mets have done, some of the transactions that they made, and, you know, basically from a fan's per point of view that some of the blogs out there don't really cover because they have, you know, affiliations with SNY and the New York Mets organization. I have no affiliation with the Mets organization. I'm just a fan like the rest of you guys. And I'm really aggravated with where this team is headed right now. And I think that we need a forum. We need to express to the Mets that, listen, if you're going to do, keep doing what you're doing, we're not going to go to the games. And I don't want to be that type of fan. I don't want to be the type of fan that just stops going to games. But sometimes you really need to call them out and be like, listen, we're not going to go to games anymore. If you, you can't be aggravated with where the team is going and then go and sell out the stadium. Because the bottom, at the end of the day, the World Ponds are going to look at their bottom line. And if their bottom line says that no matter what they put out on the field, the Mets the fans are going to the games and they're making a profit, then they're never going to change. They're never going to change. But the only way they can change is if they look at their brand new stadium and see it, a lot of empty seats. Um, I don't want to be too cynical about the Mets right now. I, think, I thought they made a really good move today. They signed Frank Catalanato to a minor league deal. He'll probably make the team as probably the last bench player. Um, I think that the great thing about Frank Catalanato here is not his not his glove, not his bat, but the presence that he's going to be in the clubhouse. He has a uh, great leadership qualities. I mean, you always heard uh, Carlos Delgado talk about his time with him in in uh, Toronto, and Mark Teixeira even referenced him to his time with him in Texas as Frank Catalanato being one of one of the greatest hitting coaches slash players in the game. And I think that that's going to be great for the Mets. I think that it's going to be do wonders for guys like Daniel Murphy, uh, for Jeff Francoeur, uh, even David Wright and Jose Reyes. I think that the signing of Catalanato proves to be one of the best signings of the offseason uh, in terms of minor the minor moves the Mets have made. Uh, Jason Bay it was a great move, I thought, but now with the loss of Carlos Beltran, we're really back to square one without the great defense that Beltran provided. So I think the Mets are still a bad team right now. I don't think they'll compete. I think at most they're a 75-win ball club. And they really need to look in the mirror and blame themselves for how things got this bad. Uh, their total neglect towards the Major League Baseball draft uh, and their minor league system is atrocious. Uh, you look at teams like the Boston Red Sox, who spend a ton of money, give up tons of draft picks by signing free agents, and yet they still have one of the you know top five, top three minor league systems in the game. And then you look at the Mets, who spend less money than the Red Sox, and have one of the worst minor league uh, systems in the game. Now, granted, Keith Law only ranked them ranked them about twenty second, which is up from last year, but you know the Mets minor league system doesn't have anybody who's ready to help the team right now. Uh, our starting pitchings, I mean, I know Henry Maja is supposed to be a great prospect and that he has ace stuff, but we're not lucky. He's not probably going to be in City Field till 2011, 2012. So I think for Met fans who are hoping that this 24-year drought of no World Series championship is going to come to an end this year, I think you better not hold your breath because right now it doesn't look like this team is going to compete, and it's it's really sad because when you when you you you're paying your payroll 116 million dollars, you expect them to at least be a playoff team. I don't think that the Mets are a playoff team right now, not with the starting rotation that they're going to put out there on opening day. Um, if this Johan Santana, you just have a ton of question marks, and to have four question marks after your number one pitcher with 116 million dollar payroll is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, Mike Pelfrey, they expect to be a number two starter. I don't know what Mike Pelfrey they were watching last season, but I was watching a Mike Pelfrey who just unraveled in the fifth inning over and over again. Couldn't couldn't pitch with guys on base. And to sit there and for Omar Minari to go on Mets Hot Stove Report and actually say that Mike Pelfrey is going to be the number two starter on this team and expect us to compete is laughable. Uh, Mike, I think, has the potential to be a great number three, maybe number four starter in this league. But as far as being a number two pitcher on a team you hope to compete, I just don't see it. Uh, John Main has done nothing but show that he's going to break down middle of the year and basically be useless to us and force us to plug a hole. 
Oliver Perez has shown that we shouldn't have given him all that money because now we've given it to him and we're seeing the same problems that the Pittsburgh Pirates saw when they gave him a huge contract. So that's that. Um, and then, you know, the fifth spot is actually somewhere where there is some encouragement. I like Fernando Nieve. I think he'll be good. I think Jonathan Nice will bounce back from his hamstring injury and actually be a solid addition to the rotation. But it, it, it's really moot when your number two through number four starters are basically useless. Um, I don't know where everybody thinks that uh, John Main and Oliver Perez and Mike Crawford have earned all this all this rope to hang themselves with, but uh, for what? With 2006? 2006? Let's get, let's get real, guys. It's going to be four years ago now. Uh, we need to stop clinging on to 2006 and start worrying about 2010 and where these players are in 2010. And right now, in 2010, John Main is nothing more than a number four, number five starter. And Oliver Perez shouldn't even be in a rotation in the major leagues as far as, far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, I think the, I thought really thought that the Mets needed to get the biggest problem, the biggest needs for the Mets this offseason were to go out and get a bopper in left field and to go out and get a legitimate number two starter to go behind Johan Santana if we wanted to be competitive. Uh, I think even if they would have done that, it was still going to be tough to, to surpass the Phillies in the division. But I thought if we went out and got a power-hitting outfielder and a legitimate number two starter, we could have easily competed for the wild card because after after the Phillies and the Dodgers, the, the National League is wide open. I don't see – I'm not impressed with the Cubs. I'm not impressed with the Cardinals. And I'm certainly not impressed with the Brewers. And anybody in the West, uh, the Rockies, I, I think that – if we would have went out and put together a solid offseason and made, you know, fit, plugged the holes that we needed to plug, I really thought that we would have owned the wild card. I really thought that it was something that we could have done easily. And we should do easily with $116 million payroll. There should be no question that we should at least be a playoff team. And I uh, just think that this is going to be a wash this year. 2010 is basically going to be the final year of the Omar Minayim era. Uh, I think the Mets will fail and make the playoffs and will. Omar Minaya will be gone, and then we'll be back to square one. Because when a new general manager comes in, that means nobody's safe. Because that general manager basically didn't didn't put any of the, didn't sign any of those guys, didn't draft any of those guys. So it, it's really looking like the dark days are here again. Um, you know, back in two thousand and five and two thousand and six, we really thought that the Mets were about to turn the page as an organization, and then oh seven happened, and basically it's just been tailspin ever since then um so i thought they made a great signing today but the fact of the matter is the future is bleak for the new york mets i hope i'm wrong i hope ever, all the media is wrong uh, let's face it the media usually is wrong i mean let's face it before 2009 before the season started sports illustrated picked the mets to win the world series because they went out and got jj puts and k-rod now they're picking the mets pretty much finish you know fourth or fifth in the division Maybe we'll go and run the table. I mean, basically, that's what it's come down to as a Met fan is just to hope that everybody is wrong and hope that we can surpass our expectations, which at this point really isn't. We really don't have many expectations. But I encourage all feedback from you guys. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think, if, what I can improve on. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at uh, nofiltermets at gmail.com. Also, there's a comment section on YouTube that you guys could just let me have it. If you think that I suck, let me know it. Because the great thing about us Mets fans is that we're very opinionated, and that's what makes us different from any other sports fan in the world. So uh, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, look forward to hearing from you and talking to you next week.